So welcome to our service today. We're celebrating St. James the Apostle. A very warm welcome to those who, was, those who are watching at home. So let us stand as we sing our opening hymn. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels round the throne. Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To God be glory and kingship forever and ever. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Rejoice, people of God. Praise the Lord. Let us keep the feast in honor of all God's saints in whose victory the angels rejoice and glorify the Son of God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. Please be seated. We run the race set before us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely bringing them to Jesus in penitence and faith. You were sent to preach the good news of light in the darkness of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to plant in our hearts the seed of eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were sent to reconcile us to yourself by the shedding of your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And as God's forgiven people, now we stand to sing the glory. Merciful God, whose holy apostle St. James, leaving his father and all that he had, was obedient to the calling of your Son, Jesus Christ, and followed him even to death. Help us, forsaking the false attractions of the world, to be ready at all times to answer your call without delay. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 45, verses 1 to 5. When Barak, son of Neriah, wrote on a scroll the words Jeremiah the prophet, dictated in the fourth year of Jericho, son of Josiah, king of Judah, Jeremiah said this to Barak, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to you, Barak. You said, Woe to me, the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am worn out with groaning and find no rest. But the Lord has told me to say to you, this is what the Lord says, I will lay the throne that I have built and uproot what I have planted. Throughout the earth, should you then seek great things for yourself? Do not seek them, for I will bring disaster on all people, declares the Lord. But wherever you go, I will let you escape with your life. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 15. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed always carrying in the body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may also be made visible in our bodies for while we live we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh so death is at work in us but life in you but just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture i believed and so i spoke we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the lord jesus will raise us also with jesus 
and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. This is the word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
The mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favour of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will even need to drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man came not to, to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for those words. We pray that you will help us to respond to your word, that we may seek to serve you and one another and the community in which we are set. To your praise and to your glory. Amen. I would love to have been listening to that conversation between James and John. You ask him. No, you ask him. I'm not going to ask him. Go on, you can do it. No, 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 no. no. You do it. I'll tell you what. Mum will do it. We'll ask Mum. She's the matriarch of the family. If anyone can influence the master, she can. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, his disciples got him wrong more often than they got him right. They assumed that if he was the Messiah, the son of the living God, that that messiahship would involve defeating the hated occupiers and establishing Israel once again as a kingdom. And even after everything that they'd been through, hearing all of his teaching, even after they'd seen him die and rise, they still asked that question, just before he ascended to heaven, Lord, are you going to restore Israel at this time? He didn't say, you've got it wrong yet again. He just said, it's not for you to know the time set by my father. And at this point in the story, they recognize that this is the king that they are serving. And if he's the king, there's going to be a kingdom. And if there's going to be a kingdom, well, we want to be a part of that. We want to sit at his right and his left. How wrong they were. Nevertheless, James's mother asked that question. Grant that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right and the other at your left. And we know what the answer was. Can you drink this cup that I am going to drink? I imagine that left them completely baffled. What is he talking about? Of course, we know he was thinking of his cross, the death that he was going to suffer. And we know that James and John and so many of those early disciples suffered a martyr's death. They were willing to die for the sake of their Lord. They knew that life meant much, much more than this. That to deny Christ would mean that Christ would deny them before the Father. So they remained faithful to him right to the end. And in dying, they received the crown of life. But you see how Jesus turns everything 
on its head. In this world, you could say the greatest success would be that we have authority over others. Maybe the greatest success of all would be to, to become the prime minister, to have that ultimate authority, to be the one who stands there and says, this is what we're going to do. Most of probably wouldn't want that responsibility, but we, we look up to those who have this authority and this power. Jesus says the Gentiles lord it over each other. This is the way the world is. If you have power, you use it, and often you use it for your own ends. We know that those with the greatest power often will refuse to let go of that power, even in the face of huge opposition. And we've seen what happens in Syria when that kind of attitude allows a dictator to have that power, even to kill his own people with chemical weapons. So power is dangerous. Power can lead to suffering and pain. And as we know that very famous phrase, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. But for Jesus, the power of the kingdom is a power that works from beneath. It's not coming from above to say, this is what you are going to do. You're going to serve me. You're going to wash my feet. You're going to do what I say because I'm the boss. The power that Jesus exercises is the power of surrender. It's the power of laying down one's life. It's the power of saying, I will not exercise the authority I have. Instead, I will surrender it. Not so with you, says Jesus. You are not to be like the Gentiles. The community I am creating is not about power and authority and hierarchy and status and all the things that the world says, these are important. If you want to be great in the kingdom, you wash feet. If you want to have a status, then serve other people. And we know, of course, that Jesus didn't just preach it, he lived it. He gave his life as a ransom for many. And maybe it was only after all that had happened. Maybe it was only after Pentecost, when the Spirit was given without measure to those 120 men plus women and children. When the light of truth really was switched on in their hearts. This is what it's about. It's not about Jesus setting up the kingdom and defeating the Romans. It isn't about Israel being reestablished as a kingdom under a Davidic king. It's about love. It's about forgiveness. It's about serving each other. And if you're going to serve somebody, you must know what they want, what they need, what their needs are. And you do whatever it takes, whatever it costs, whatever you can to meet those needs, no matter what the cost to you. And of course, that's precisely what Jesus did on the cross. What is our greatest need above every other? It's the need for forgiveness. It's the need to receive forgiveness and grace. And the only way we can be forgiven is through Jesus dying, shedding his blood, fulfilling the law, taking all the punishment upon himself, letting justice and mercy meet at that moment of death, that life can be poured into all of our hearts. So Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, then be the least. On another occasion, of course, he took a child an inconsequential human being in those days, he said, you want to be great, be like this child. So there's a challenge implicit in all of this for, for each one of us. I guess most of us probably wouldn't want much power and authority, frankly. But we are called to serve not just 
each other. We're called to serve the world. We're called to serve Park Hill. We're called to serve the people among whom we live. And the question is how, as God's people, in practical terms, can we do this? Well, there's simple things. There's bringing food to church, sticking it in the Lord's larder, and that food will go to feed refugees at West Croydon Baptist Church. That doesn't cost very much in time or effort or money. At some point in the near future, there's going to be a yellow bin outside the church with a black lid, and it's going to say on there, Croydon Food Bank. And the idea is that anyone who's passing by can just drop some food in there, obviously non-perishable food, and that can be for us as well. And that's going to go to West Croydon, where there's a food bank to help the, the poor. Again, it doesn't cost very much. We pray every Sunday for a particular street or numbers of streets in our parish. I hope that we pray regularly for those among whom we live. I hope that we take the opportunity that we have to show kindness and love and goodness to those people, to our neighbours. Hopefully we invite people to whatever is happening. Even the church service. Why don't you come to church with me on Sunday? What? They might just come and surprise you. They probably won't come unless you invite them. As we hopefully, eventually, come through this pandemic, and even though we don't have to wear masks anymore, we don't have to be at distance, but most of us feel less comfortable not being at distance and we still want to wear masks, and that's absolutely fine. We're still going through it. But as we come through to hopefully some greater degree of normality, we know that the toll is great. And perhaps the greatest toll that this pandemic has taken is not just on physical health, but on mental health. That we, we know that every single one of us has taken a hit in some way. We've suffered loss. And I reckon the community is still suffering loss. I want to put before you a vision that um, we can do something about this situation, that we can serve this community. And it's, it's a very simple idea, that we actually open up the space that we have and don't just simply say, oh, come and use the space, which we are going to be doing, but to use what we have and to say, come and be as you are. And if you're not okay, that's fine, because most of us actually are not okay. And it's a vision about a very simple act of meeting together, sharing refreshments, sharing activities, hobbies, interests, and doing that in the context of prayer and in the context of partnership with mental health professionals so that we can signpost people who really need the help that's above and beyond our ability to give. We can help them to find that support. And the ideal opportunity, of course, is on a Saturday coffee morning, which will be perhaps the beginning of, of, a, of a fresh venture as we, we, uh, we aim to restart that in church in September. Whether we can do this sort of well-being cafe by then, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. But we'll certainly want to invite people to come to that coffee, drop in and say, just, just come and be. So what I'm simply asking of you today is to pray about this whole idea of creating space where we can support each other and support those in the community without any strings attached, without any sense of, oh, if you, you, know, you must do this in order to come to church on a Sunday, or whatever it may be. We have a wonderful space, which we've not used for however many months it is, in the Lady Chapel. A space where people can simply sit and be still. They can pray if they wish to, but they don't have to pray. And for a long time, we've, I've not been coming to church on my own to pray. I've been praying at home. And I feel that I need to pray here. 
So half past eight in the morning, Monday to Thursday, barring emergencies, I will be in that space saying a form of morning prayer. And anyone's very welcome to come along for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and to join me in that prayer. And part of that prayer is that we would be guided by the Lord, guided by his spirit, to seek to help and to serve this community. There are many, many needs. But I wonder whether one of the greatest needs is for mental well-being. There's a book that I've been reading which explains all of this. It's called Slow Down, Show Up and Pray. It's a great title. The idea is that we are present fully. When we meet somebody, often our minds are all over the place. But to be present fully in the moment with that person and to give them our full attention and to say, whatever you want to share with me, I am here to listen. And many of us are over busy. Many of us are doing too much. So perhaps rather than doing so much, we, we say, well, we'll do less, but we'll do it better. But the whole thing has to be birthed and undergirded and surrounded by prayer. Because without prayer, we will be wasting our time and theirs. So would you please pray? Would you please pray that this will be something that will be effective in God's kingdom? Where people are really suffering, and suffering often in silence, suffering in a way that perhaps they're wondering, How can, who can I turn to? How can I get help? And they don't even know where to go. And we can say, just come. Come as you are. Come and be not okay. It's okay to be not okay. And let's see where the Lord will take us. Let's see where this vision will bring us. And let's see how God can use us to bless our community and every single person within it. Because we want to say we are here not for ourselves. We're here not just to worship God. We're here to say this church is your space to do with what you want. We are here to serve you because you are loved and you are precious. So shall we pray? Lord, help us to understand the principles of your kingdom. Lord, we may smile at some of the things the disciples thought and said. Their desire for power, their desire for influence, their misunderstanding of your purpose and your mission. And yet, Lord, how often we fall into those same traps and pitfalls. So, God, would you help us as we seek to be a healing presence here in Park Hill, as we seek to bring light and hope and peace where there's been so much pain and dislocation and darkness, physical, mental, spiritual pain. God, would you help us as we seek to be servants to those among whom we live. Lord, lay upon our hearts the things that you want us to do. And give us a burden to pray, Lord. And then in response to that prayer, help us to be willing to say, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. In Jesus' name we pray.
Please stand so that we can say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not God. Of one being with the Father, who in all things for a moment. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered the death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son. Is worshipped and glorified, who has so consumed others. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he calls today, marks with the cross and makes his disciples within the church. Especially those facing opposition and persecution for being members of your church. Lord, have mercy. Your son told his disciples not to be afraid, and that Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. Lord, we see a world full of injustice and inequalities. Help us to put right what is wrong, and to find ways of sharing more fairly the resources you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Your son flung around him a company who were no longer servants but friends. And he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends and the and upon the communities in which we share. We pray today for the residents of Ashcroft Court and Hunter's Way, and for our immediate neighbours where each of one of us lives. Lord, we remember among our families and friends those who especially need our prayers at this time. And we ask you to give us in all our relationships 
humility, patience, understanding, and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your Son sent out disciples to preach and heal the sick. Look with mercy on all those who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing. We pray for all who care for the sick at home or in their work. And we bring before you the sick of this parish, Reverend Mora, Roger, Joe, Dorothy, Irma, Tim, Anne and Ray, Matt, Howard, Bob, Selma, Jenny, Maureen, Natasha, Rose and Percy, Yvonne, Gordon and Doris, Pauline and Norma, Iris, Janet, Charlotte, Jerry, Bishop Christopher, Reverend Tony, Pam and Alan. Lord have mercy. Your son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in this life and now have passed through death. We pray for Peter, June, Roger, John, and for the bereaved, for Emily, Charlotte, Harriet, Alan and Pam, Bettina and Caroline, for Jill, for Jill and friends at St Matthews, for Jean and Richard. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, grant that your church may faithfully hold and make known the faith that has come to us through the apostles, that with them and all your saints we may inherit the glories of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Now, let's stand as we come to share God's peace. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. God, our Father, keep us united in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. Holy, holy, holy. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. Holy, holy, holy. You send your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Amen, amen, amen. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen, amen, amen. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Do please be seated. The saints and martyrs through the ages, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. I heard the voice of a great multitude crying, Alleluia! The Lord our God has entered into his kingdom. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Notices for today. First of all, a big thank you to Richard Pillener for once again, once again coming to play for us. Richard, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Tomorrow at 1 p.m. there will be the service of thanksgiving for Roger Abbott, so, to which you are all very warmly invited. Um, Roger had a very interesting life, as you will hear if you come. I won't say more than that, but do come tomorrow. So this Wednesday, we'll be having our usual Eucharist here, and then we're going to have a break for August, and then September, we're hoping that we'll be back in the Lady Chapel on a Wednesday morning, if all is well, and we feel safe to do that. But uh, So Wednesday is the final Eucharist here. Then we get the Holiday Club. We haven't had that many takers yet, so it's still in the balance as to whether it will go ahead. But don't forget to bring uh, Pringles, tubes, and other items, brown paper packaging, and all that. Uh, you should be familiar with all those things by now. So do, do bring those things along, and clear yogurt pots as well. Uh, we have managed to achieve a thousand pounds worth of pledges for the big Christmas challenge. Can you click on to the next? So if you wish, you're very welcome to continue to pledge, obviously. Um, so a minimum of a hundred pounds pledge, and Jan and David are not here, I don't think, today. I can't see them. But I have the details. If you want to know where to go on the website to do all that, you're very welcome. We've got till the 27th of August, and we're hoping and praying that uh, we'll get a champion, um, a corporate body, who will say, yes, a roof is a good thing, and uh, will help us and support us with some match funding. So that's, that's the aim of the whole thing, to, to really get more um, publicity for us and, and increase our giving. Anything else I've forgotten to mention? We're still not yet able to reopen the kitchen for refreshments, but hopefully we'll get that to a place where we are um, safe to share tea and coffee after the service. We won't be having a Zoom call after church today because I'll be uploading videos for John's recording, uh, which will be coming out during the week. So shall we stand as we sing the hymn, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky,
Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. All your works praise you, Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let everything bless his holy name forever and ever. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and all those for whom you pray this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Following God's saints in the ways of holiness and truth, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.